How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming, and welcome to Learning RPG Maker MZ, The Basics. This is a very simplified tutorial series that T, my wife, and I plan to put out on this channel. This is a series sponsored by Dejica. Thank you so much, Dejica, for making this happen. The idea here is to take you from knowing absolutely nothing about making games and take you to a place where you're very comfortable and you can hit that deploy button and put out some games for your friends and maybe even to sell. So this is a complete uh, extensive series and hopefully you stick around and learn some uh, some really good information and hopefully it's helpful to you in some way. So without further ado, thank you for joining me and let's get started taking a look at this new beautiful delicious looking RPG Maker MZ. It looks great. Um, I've had it for a little while now. Um, obviously, I haven't been able to say anything about it due to NDAs, but now that that has been lifted. I love RPG Maker MZ. It's an awesome engine, and let me show you why. Um, let's start at the very beginning. You have all of your basic drop-down menus, your file, edit, mode, etc., etc. I'm going to go through each of them individually as quick as I possibly can and give you a description of what they do. Now, I understand you're probably going to know a lot of what I'm about to say, but remember the idea of this series, so we want to not skip any people. I'm going to go very basic in this, in this tutorial, and just bear with me. If you're really, really past this, um, then maybe you want to see one of our other tutorials. I promise more advanced tutorials uh, in the future alongside these beginner ones. So looking at the file, we can do several things. We can create a new project. If you do create a new project, you give it a name, you give it a title, you select the location you want it to go, you hit OK, it loads all the files into a folder. Um, obviously there's a whole lot to cover, so I'm going to try to go through these quickly. Open a file, obviously. If you have a game.rmmz project file from another project, that's the one you're going to target and open. Uh, that will open up the actual project. Um, the same thing for closing a project. Project. If you close it, it'll just close the project so we can open that right back up by open the game uh, file. You can open from the workshop. So we have Steam Workshop in this, and you can see right here. We can open up other people's projects from the workshop, uh, which is really cool. So if you go to the workshop and you subscribe to other people's content, you can get it and import it into your engine directly. Uh, it's It's got this integrated feature. It had it in MV as well, and it's really cool. Um, then you can also upload to workshop. You can send your game, you can, or you can select your category, which is game or resources, because maybe you just have like an asset pack like maybe you just made some icons or some sound effects but you want to upload it through steam uh, you can do that here just select that as resources or you made a demo you want to upload for other people to use as a sample project you can do that select your uh, set it as a game and select your your genre and your your flavor etc you can upload an image for the steam workshop in a description and other people can subscribe to you through steam and download the stuff that you put up so a lot of people don't know about that but it's there and it's been an mv for a while it's really cool I remember Noob KX um, putting a lot of really good stuff uh, on the Steam Workshop for MV. So obviously we have the deployment. This is the button that we're going to get to at the very end. Uh, we This is the button where we package our game and we, we put it in a box and we send it away and hopefully people open it up and it's not all broken, right? So this is our deployment. Uh, you select what uh, operating system you want to deploy to. In order to do mobile, you, um, you package it uh, as an APK and it's going to be basically in a www folder uh, as a web browser. So it still can go on mobile. It's the same thing right so you got windows mac os or web browsers html5 using pixie 5 this is a really cool engine you can choose options here you can exclude unused files now i know in mv we had some issues you, uh, with this i haven't tried it in mz yet but in mv we had some issues where it was removing a lot of files uh, that were um, required for the game to run properly and that was due to the plugins needing them and the it did it didn't scrub through your plugins to check what the plugins resources requirements were so you use this at your own peril and if you do use it you might have to go back in and manually add stuff that it removes even though you need them Moving on to encryption, you can choose to encrypt just your audio or just your uh, images or both, and you can give it a key, and uh, you choose where you want to deploy that to. It'll deploy into a regular folder, which you can then zip and upload to like Google Drive or Dropbox for people to get a download link and to share your game if you don't want to do it through Steam that way. Then obviously the exit button. Moving on to edit, um, these are all relative, so you're going to be able to do things on events. So if I highlight one of these events, the edit shows options. I can 
can cut this, I can go over here and I can paste this. I can also do a find. And this will help you find um, whatever map events you're looking for. Uh, it's really cool that they have a find um, function that you can search through your events for stuff. So the find is there. Uh, shortcuts are control C to copy, control V to paste, and control F to find. So then we have different modes. This is the same as MV. Of course, one of the modes is very much different. I'm not gonna touch too much on it because T is going to be covering a lot of detail on this mapping stuff, but we have the map mode editing tool and the event mode editing tool. The differences you'll see between map and eventing in comparison to MV, uh, from MV to MZ, you're gonna see on the left-hand side that we now have an event viewer built in uh, that replaces where we have our tile set uh, viewer because uh, we, obviously if we're in the event mode, we're not drawing tiles, so this is free space. Uh, it was really, really good uh, creative design to put the event editor right here. Whoever was in charge of this idea, big thumbs up, I like this. The bonuses to this, let me just go to an example of why you'd want this. This is a map where I have a bunch of template events that I've designed for like treasure chests. And, and when I wanna copy paste an elixir, uh, I can just go here and I click on the left-hand side and I can see it. Really cool addition uh, to the event mode. Uh, if I wanted to take an elixir, I can click on it and it'll tell me where that's at and then boom, I can control C and I can go to another place and paste it and or on another map or something. And uh, and this is this is really cool. So I really really like this part of it. Uh, this this new addition. Um, moving on to the draw. All of these are once again are relative and they're all dependent on you being in the map mode. So if you're not in the map mode, then the draw layer will show nothing. But once you're in the map mode, you'll see that you have these tools: pencil, rectangle, uh, ellipse, flood fill and the the shadow pen. I'll just quickly go over what they do. So if we created a new map and we'll go to the draw tool and let's take the obviously the pencil, you're going to be able to draw individual tiles. You can move in, you can zoom out. These are the, the main tools that you're going to be using. If you want to draw a box, you left click and hold. There you go. You got a box. You can left click and hold for, to, to make a circle. I suppose I should undo a little bit so you can see the circle. Uh, the ellipse tool, I just call it circle tool, but it's called the ellipse tool. Then we have the, the flood fill tool, which is also cool. It'll just fill up everything. And these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you wanna make a little map, you can do some trees down like, like so, and uh, use these different rectangles to, um, you know, help you speed up your workflow or something, right? Boom, there you go. Um, I'm not going to go too much into to the mapping because T's covered a bunch about the mapping. So let's move on to the next thing. We just talked about the scale. We can zoom in. We can zoom out. They're also part of this right here. So these are these tools, uh, but you can do them with Control Plus uh, or Control Minus, and uh, we can also hit that one to one to put us back. And then we have the tools. This is a, a little bit more involved. The tools consist of the database and the plugin manager, as well as other things. We're going to go into the database and plugin manager in just a second. Jumping down, we have sound test. This is just a place where you can click on your music and listen to your sounds. And you can go and play some background sounds. You can test your music effects, test your sound effects, etc., etc. You can do this uh, in multiple places, but that this is one of the spots that you can get to it. Tools, a sound test. It's also that button right there. So these tools are also shortcutted. So these buttons right here. Uh, represent what's in this drop down list. So it's whatever you like better. So this is the database, this is the plugin manager, this is a sound test. So it's actually right there as well. So this button that shows a laptop computer with a magnifying glass on the screen is your event searcher. To use it, you click on the button and it'll open up this menu and you can select from different switches or different variables or even event names to search for all of the events in your game that have those things in them. For example, if I wanted to see what events contain this switch number one, select class, I would put that in here and say search. And then it'll show me the results showing map two, the class selection map, has an event 001 called init on page one, position one one, and it gives you all the results. So it does uh, help you find certain events if you're specifically looking for them. Let's try it again. Let's go for uh, animation spray. What events have this variable in it? Two of them, the starting point here and the starting point there have the animation spray variable in there. So that is the event searcher. 
Next up, we have the resource manager. Now the resource manager can be circumvented if you wanna add um, the files manually through game open folder and then add them in like so, game open folder, and then copy paste your files in manually. If you don't wanna do that manually, you can easily do it through the resource manager. They've simplified it if you prefer this flow of work. Say you wanna add a background music, you'll go to audio slash BGM, you'll click import, you'll locate the file, you'll click on the file and you'll say, oh, open and it'll add it to this list that you have uh, for your database of all of those BGMs. You can also remove them from the resource manager so if you accidentally add a bunch of stuff that you don't want, you can come here and just delete it out. Also DLCs will be here, so if you want to add DLC, this is a quick way that you can add DLC. Open up the resource manager, click on the DLC dot 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 button, and it automatically goes into your stream library, Steam apps, common, RPG Maker MZ, DLC folder. So any DLC that you happen to buy will show up here, so you can click on the base resources which should come with it, and then click on the plugins to add or whatever you want. Make sure that you select the right tab on this left hand side before you add the resource sources. For example, you don't want to add images to an audio BGM folder or you don't want to add audio to like the IMG faces folder. And that's basically it. I was hoping that I would be able to do partial matches. And I know we, you can do this with some regex if they do it, but um, that's the event searcher. The character generator. This is what we're going to cover uh, in my next episode. We're going to really go over character gener uh, generator a whole lot, but just know that they've improved the generator and added an offset. So now let's randomize a bunch of people and then we get we get this guy he's great he's amazing let's click on something and start offsetting it what can we offset uh what about his mouth can we can we go to his mouth and upset, offset his mouth what if we braise his mouth up oh his mouth is up can we bring his nose down to below his mouth oh it's so good his nose is below his mouth what about his eyes can his eyes go down yes so it's they've improved this a lot i'm that's as far as i'm going to go with it because i'm going to do another episode where we do a whole bunch with the generator but that's it for that so we've got character generator and then we have the options you select your transparent color for your for your graphics say you have like a pink background for all of your assets that's okay just find that exact color and set that as your color in here rgb scale is, is what it's looking for so find the right rgb and then it will just blank out any of that color and make it transparent so you don't have to have a transparent background you just have to have all of them that, like if they all have black background that would work too personally i like it just having transparent background background because you can save your art and use it in multiple things. Uh, so I, I recommend you leave this the same actually. Moving on we have the map grid. So obviously you can show it by doing that and hitting apply. Uh, if you want to change it so that uh, it's however many tiles by however many tiles, you can do that. Just hit apply and now it'll do a line through 10 by 10. If we zoom in, you see the black line right here that would signify 10 tiles. So 10, 10 by 10. At the beginning of this tutorial I had it set to 5 and now it's set to 10. Then we have the UI which you can select different different themes. This is the default theme. When you first install it, it's going to look like this, and this is probably something more familiar. So if your question was, how do I make it dark mode? That's where it's at. You go to tools, then you go to options, and then you go to UI, and then you go to theme, and you change it to whatever you want. Here's the high contrast white, which I'm not a huge fan of, uh, then the high contrast black, which also not a huge fan of, but some people like it. I like the soft dark theme, just the dark theme is good. Uh, object selector. So what this is, is throughout the, the engine, you're going to have a lot of drop downs and a lot of different selectors where you have to decide what animation to use or what skill to use or like select an item from a list. And it's saying, how do you want the UI to present that information to you? And you have three options. You have the drop down, which is designed for less than 100 objects. You have the extended uh, selector, which is designed for more than 100, 100 objects. And then you have the smart selector, which is designed to switch back and forth between drop down and extended depending on how many objects you are have, that you have to show so I really suggest you select smart because it, it tends to work really good and then we have moving on to game we have the play test which is control plus R um, or I just hit this little button right here and then that starts your game another thing you I already showed you earlier but game open folder to show all of your resources all of your plugins go into the JS plugins folder all of your um, other images go into IMG and then they're according their specific folders thereafter. Uh, pretty simple. 
Then we have something really cool that we didn't have in MV. This is the update core script function built into MZ. So what this is going to do is show your current version of the game, of this game, not necessarily the engine, but the core script of the game that you're running, right? Because it's kind of confusing. You have, you have engine version and then you have your own games version. So quite often you want your engine and your game to be running on the same version, but that's not always the case. And a lot of the times new things are put out, it breaks old things. And if you really need some of those old things to run, you may want to stay at a specific version version. This is prior to release, so I'm using version 0.9.5. I could roll back to 0.9.4 if I wanted to, to make some of my plugins compatible if that was the case. Probably won't be um, using this very often, but in the niche case that you need to know your version uh, or you want to update it, this is a fantastic thing to have. So the core script updater has been added under the game dropdown, and that's a very good thing to have. Finally, we have the last thing to look at. We have help, contents, F1, you have your help file. Then we have the RPG Maker Web button, which simply opens up a link to the RPG Maker Web as it should, and that's basically it. Then we have the tutorial. This is a cool new feature that didn't come with MV, and I'm glad they included it. T went through the whole thing. I'll let her talk about it. I don't want to cover the same subject. This is a cool built-in tutorial, and it is here now, and it's got very specific things. And if you're also new and this this is helping you, I recommend you run through this. It'll at least give you a basic understanding of, of a little bit more about the engine. So they included a, a tutorial under help. Tutorial, really, really cool that they did that. Good job to Dejika and the team. Then the about is another place where we used to go to check our current version number, and it, it basically just tells you your, your your current version and and that's what the about page will do and show an icon that's about it all of the buttons underneath here are part of the interface but they're just shortcuts to these right so everything that I went through is everything and then these are just shortcuts and I'll go over them this is to start a new project this is to open a project this button will save your current project this is to cut this is to copy this is to paste this is an undo button also you can control Z these are the two modes the tile set mode and the event mode the map mode and event mode if you're in map mode the other tools right here open up the pencil draw the rectangle draw the ellipses the fill tool the shadow pen and regardless of your mode the other buttons work so you can zoom in and zoom out if you're at max zoom in obviously you can't zoom in anymore and if you're at max zoom outage obviously you can't zoom out anymore the max zoom outage is pretty lenient though it lets you zoom out quite a bit then these this is your button for the database we're going to go into the database and it's going to be glorious but it's not in this episode so stay tuned for more episodes we're going to go into the database and then we have the plugin manager and we, this engine comes with a ton of plugins luckily so we'll go into the plugin manager later this is the sound test which we already did we already looked at all of these we're just showing the shortcuts you have the event searcher we have a resource manager this is our character gen and then of course the last one is a play test for our engine and that's basically it for um, for all of the things at the top. The left hand side is for mapping. We have a whole nother tutorial coming up specifically for mapping this other part of the engine that T is going to take over here and do a fantastic job with. This is where you start your maps. If you wanted to start a new map, you'd right click, you'd start a new map like that. You can also right click anywhere here and load sample maps. The, the engine comes with tons of sample maps. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. Hopefully you learned something new. And if you didn't stay tuned, they're going to get more complicated and hopefully uh, we provide you with some benefit. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up, like, favorite, share, subscribe, all the things that you would like to do. We'd appreciate it. Hit that notification bell if you'd like to stay tuned. Also, please join us on the Discord where you can come hang out with us. And that's it. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.